Taylor Backman, please put your hands together. Hello, hello, how's everyone doing? I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is by far the most people I've ever talked to at one time, so that's very exciting. And in particular, I'm talking about Zoho One, which is, of course, the big suite of apps that includes everything that we do. Um, that's the kind of the all-in-one offering. And then with that, um, what, I'm, what I'm talking about essentially today is we're going to talk about kind of integration and how nice things work um, when everything is, is together. And piggybacking off what Paul was talking about, um, we're really talking about now how do, you, how do you actually create those good customer experiences, I mean, from your perspective, right? I mean, it starts with having the right processes, and it starts then with, with getting those processes into the right software so you can make things really easy on yourself internally, and you can keep focusing on delivering that value, right? I mean, if we're running around and worried about data entry all the time, if we're running around worried about, like, where do we find this document? Where's that filing cabinet? What happened to John? Is he on vacation? He's the guy that knows how to do that thing, and now we're screwed for a week, right? It's going to be really hard to actually give customers consistently great and valuable uh, experiences and, 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 and really make them uh, feel, feel really valued and, and appreciated. So this is that stuff that, that, that really matters, and that's really the value of having, um, you know, just apps that, that work well together. Raju, in the big picture session, he talked about all of these different things that we do, and he illustrated this problem. I'm, I'm actually just stealing his slides here of, of what we call the, the multi-vendor solution. We obviously know that you know, something like CRM is really great for uh, improving our sales and, and you know, able to uh, allow us to keep track of our pipeline so we can keep uh, having a repeatable and improved sales process. And we know that you know, we need documents online and in the cloud, and we need to have those on our laptop if we're at the airport or on our mobile phone if we're on the plane, right? We need, we need to be able to have all of these different things and all of these different systems, but ultimately, where they really start to create a lot of value is when they work really well together. And the problem is, is when you take one app from one company, one app from another vendor, one app from another vendor, one app from another vendor, and you try to make all that work, it really just, it just has a lot, of, uh, a lot of trouble. You're kind of making a Frankenstein sort of thing, you know? You're getting to be the Dr. Frankenstein, and you have, like, Igor is like your, you know, your, uh, your you know, CEO or COO, and you're just, like, kind of, like, hunched around and trying to get the electricity into the thing, and it keeps breaking, right? So this is kind of the, the issue um, with the multi-vendor solution, and as we say, this is, this is kind of how it ends up looking. It's this massive big mess that we refer to as the integration spaghetti, and it's, it's not fun to deal with, and it's expensive to deal with. Um, and, and ultimately, that's something that Zoho is really trying to replace with, with as we say, our integrated suite of applications. So I think that we, we kind of understand this, and we've seen some of these applications from yesterday, and we'll continue to see more of them. So um, what we're going to do in this session is kind of talk about how those applications work together from end to end, so you can get a much stronger picture of what, of what this really looks like and what you can really do when all of these apps work together. So does that sound interesting and or good? Okay, if you don't like that, that's too bad because we're doing it anyway, all right? Okay, so there's going to be a lot of demo in this, in this session. I'm going to be doing the first part of it, and then uh, my colleague and friend, Dylan, who's awkwardly standing in the corner over here, he's going to come on and he's going to show some of the finance stuff. And then I'm going to come back on and just kind of wrap this up, and then we'll be able to take all of your questions, okay? So we'll start with looking at the, like a customer life cycle, essentially. We'll start by looking at really where this all begins in trying to um, create a customer, and we'll look at how that, that really ends as far as um, you know, the accounting side and, and really actually making sure that we're, we're keeping track of money. So really where this starts is with a domain. We all know what a domain is. It's the thing that basically allows you to register yourself or your business online, have a website, have a professional business email. Obviously, this is one of the most important things to having a business these days because, for example, if you were trying to register the domain zoho.com, you're shit out of luck, right? <laughs> you're going to have to try to find a better name or a different name or find something that's, that's going to work for your business. So um, you, you need that domain, which really begins that process of actually creating the company. It really actually begins the process 
of building a presence. And building a presence is something that can happen in the physical real world if you open up a storefront um, or if you, you, know, you go to trade shows and you're always kind of in this place that people always can find you. But it also happens online, which is really the cornerstone of that is, is having a website. Having a website with that domain that people always know where they can go and find you. And it also includes you know, social media profiles and, and getting listed in all these different um, online marketplaces like Yelp or Google Maps, whatever. It's about just being there so people can find you. Of course, unless you are a company that's like Apple, you have to you know, really drive people into those presents. You have to really get them to move to those places. And that part of, of driving traffic or driving awareness or creating awareness is a part of this next step, which we kind of usually consider as the key part or the key moment of marketing, right? This is usually advertising. This is usually something that, that begins with creating a campaign that ultimately results in generating leads. Generating leads is going to be an, inc an incredibly important step because to this point, you're not actually collecting any information. You're not actually you know, gaining anything that you can work with, right? You can have a great website, you can have a great ad campaign, but if no one has any way to ever get a hold of you and actually say, hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm interested in this, then, you're, then you've done nothing to this point. You're not really gonna get anywhere, right? So generating leads is going to be incredibly important um, to, to just, you know, marketing your business and to uh, essentially start the process of sales. And sales, generally speaking, is really about following up with leads, trying to understand the requirements, and, and figuring out if you can actually do a deal with them and what needs to get done if this deal is going to happen. And it really, again, it connects to this thing of, of having those leads and being able to follow up and close them. And then, of course, you have a customer now and you need to support them. Paul talked all about this, you know? It's not enough that you buy the, the, the ticket for United. United still has to like smile at you and, and not drag you off a plane and all sorts of other fun things, right? They have, to, they have to still do their job to support the customer. And if they can even go you know, well beyond that and really delight you and create this really memorable experience, then you're probably gonna fly with them for life, right? So that's an incredibly important part of the of the really customer kind of experience, the kind of customer process. So, so far, this is, you can see that there's a lot more stuff to come on this slide. There's more things we're gonna show you, but generally speaking, most, um, if, if we're talking about a company that, like a software vendor that does sales software, or does marketing software, or does support software, this is usually where it ends, right here. This is usually where most suites end, just at this part right here because they talk about, you know, it's really a sexy topic, right? Marketing and sales and, you know, we'll do some Glengarry Glen Ross stuff and we'll talk about the steak knives and ABCs, right? This is the kind of thing that people are always, are always really focused on. And, and this is what you can get with our, our product suite CRM Plus, which gives you all of those customer facing applications. So we've made that available, but we've recognized that things need to go beyond that. It shouldn't just stop here because ultimately what have we done yeah, we've, we've made people feel good and we've made a deal, but have we gotten paid yet? No. Is getting paid gonna be kind of important to what our whole business is? Yes, it's gonna be incredibly important. And those processes have to connect, which is why when you follow up and close with a customer or you're following up and attempting to close, there is a process of approving quotes or approving an estimate because sometimes you might need to actually agree to what the price is before you're really going to be able to say for sure that everything's done. You might have the handshake deal, but you haven't had anyone put pen to paper yet to say that they're for sure committed and they're for sure buying it. That's gonna be really important. And of course, once you have that, that approval uh, for the quote or for the estimate, now you need to invoice. And invoicing might um, take into a number of things. You might be, for example, a services company and you need to be tracking your time. You might have expenses that are built into these projects you're doing and you need to incorporate that into your billing. Well, how do you track the time, right? How do you track all those expenses? How would you pull all of those things together? Those are multiple systems within themselves and they need to be there. And that can be there when you're sending that invoice. But of course, you, get, you send the invoice. You still need to process the payment. You still need to actually get the money. This is something that's like super alarming, the number of like small, medium-sized businesses that simply never get paid, 
It's crazy, right? So you need good systems in place to nudge your customer or to really track them down so that way you can make sure you're getting paid. And once you get paid, you're going to need to do the most basic part of any accounting, which is simply matching the payment to the invoice, right? And that way you can actually say this, you know, is accounted for, right? And that way, you know, you can stay like legal and do your taxes and not go to prison and all sorts of other real fun things like that. Okay, and so then of course, you know, maybe you have a physical product that you need to actually get out or it's again a product you need to make, you need to ship it. If this is something physical, you, you need to know, okay, we've gotten paid, now it's time to deliver the product. Well, you might need to integrate with shipping carriers and you might need to, you know, give that customer a tracking number so that they can have that really wonderful online ordering experience where you say, when is it coming? When is it coming? And you keep checking the USPS tracking number and you go, it's supposed to be here today. God, I want to get home, right? And it's, it's this whole fun thing, right? And that's something that's really, really great. And then, of course, after you have finally made that shipment and it's all out and you know this thing is delivered, you're going to need to update the inventory so you have an accurate count of all of your products. So that way, you know when you're closing the deal back up top or you're generating the lead that you actually have a product to sell that person and you can, again, keep those experiences moving forward. Okay? So, this is an insane amount of stuff that I've just laid out. We can probably agree, right? I talk a little fast, so I make, it, I make it go by a little quicker. But in general, this is an insane amount of stuff for, for, for one software company or one product suite to offer, but that's actually what Zoho One offers. And this is really where that value is. And again, the value that I'm trying to tell you about today is that when you can connect all these things and you can have seamless processes and you can have the software that matches those seamless processes, it gives you the more time, it gives you more energy, it gives you more resources to focus on innovating, creating new products, and actually delivering those really compelling customer experiences. Of course, this is just a diagram, right? Just a diagram. So now we're gonna move into the demo part of this, which is essentially our attempt to prove this to you, okay? We don't have all day though, so that means we're gonna have to kind of cut it down and move through it, um, not like quickly, 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 but a little quicker. I mean, we could do this for several hours today if we wanted to, but I don't think you or I actually really wanna do that, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just move over, and I'm gonna start by walking you through um, this, this first key process of having um, a presence which is, of course, the website. So this is a fake company. It is a, a demo site we use for a company called, that we've made up. It's a design agency called Out of Line Design. And if you were in the marketing track, who was in the marketing track yesterday? So a few of you, okay. Um, you'll have recognized this from our demos. This is a, as I said, a, uh, a demo site that we've created. And ultimately, we're going to just kind of just take a quick look at this website. Um, there's this big carousel up here, this nice design element, um, kind of a clean looking page that talks about different services that are offered. There's this whole customer testimonial section, and there's even a little uh, form here that allows you to sign up for a newsletter. Um, there's a contact page, which allows people to go on here and, and get in touch with the business. If they're on a mobile device, for example, this website will render on mobile, so that way it, it, it looks good on there. Um, if the phone number's listed here and someone clicks that button on their mobile phone, it'll dial you up right away, right? So there's different things like that that are on the site, and there's a form. Um, there's product pages, there's a blog, so that way they can do content marketing and um, and ultimately try to you know, improve their SEO and, and offer people value through their blog by sharing expertise and such. There's a payment portal, which Dylan will talk about a little bit later. There's a, a little floating icon, which is a, a live chat window, which is powered by um, Sales IQ. It allows you to, to do all that live chat stuff. Um, there's even a careers page here. So that way they can start recruiting new employees that might you know, really love this business and they can apply for a job and the resume will get submitted into a system and, and all of this stuff. So, so just from this kind of really kind of brief little overview of this website, would we say this is a pretty complete and powerful website to, to offer all of these different things? Would we say it's pretty good? 
so four people. I'm, I'll give you one more chance, okay? When we say, so you, you can see that I'm just begging the question, really, which is kind of offensive from a rhetorical standpoint. But uh, when we say this is a pretty powerful website? Okay. Awesome. Okay, I don't need sarcasm, sir. My goodness. <laughs> You're on my list now. Um, all right, so we, we, have, uh, we have this website. And obviously, I'm, I'm showing you all this because this entire website and all of these different components are powered by Zoho. They're powered, powered by all of the different components that are within the Zoho suite, all the different services that we offer. And all of this was done without any code whatsoever without any coding experience. Dylan and I have film and literature degrees and Dylan did this in just a few hours, okay? So really, if we can do it, anyone can. That's kind of the point of us in our roles. We try to kind of take your perspective and try to make sure that things are, are easy and things can actually be done. And when we struggle to learn things, we know that you will, and that means we need to talk to the product teams to make sure things keep improving, okay? So we were able to do all of this um, within just a few hours. So what I'll start with then is showing you Sites. And Sites is this website builder, something kind of comparable to Wix or uh, Squarespace. It's going to allow you to build a website quickly and, uh, and really make something, something that's really uh, attractive fairly easily. So you can see when we get into the builder here that we're looking really at just the website. And really the difference is, is now we have these little um, windows you can see that are kind of yellow with these little toolbars that follow us around. So for example, if we need to swap out this image, we can simply click this blue button here, and there you go. We can change out the image, or we can upload a new one from you know, our local machine here. Um, we can do all of this different stuff. This whole element here, for example, this, this would take quite a while to make if you were designing this um, from scratch in HTML or using CSS, um, which are this the, you know, the, the languages that are used to uh, create web pages. And if you wanted to make something like this, like I said, it would, it would take some time. But in Sites, you can simply click Add and go to Sections, and there's all these pre-made sections here. In fact, you'll see that this section is exactly what the section was when we added it to the site, right? All we did was just changed out some of the text here. So just like that, you could add a whole really pretty design section, swap out these images, like I said, by clicking the blue button, updating the, the names of these businesses, and you, you have a really nice professional-looking customer testimonial section. So that's, again, that's, that's how easy it is to make something that looks really attractive. But now let's talk about something even cooler, right? Which is, again, something that talks about these integrations, something that's really slick. This whole sign-up form here for, for an email newsletter, this is something that's as easy as clicking Add, Elements, going down to the newsletter thing, and there it is. A whole you know, heading, subheading, and the text is added. But what's really cool is this box right over here that gets added. And you can see it says, click to connect Zoho campaigns, click to connect MailChimp. I click campaigns, because that's what I want to use. It provides me with the different lists of mailing lists that are in my campaigns account. I'll say leads. And all I have to do now is hit publish, and this is live, just like that. Adding a web form, adding the content, connecting it to the back-end system that's going to be able to send out all of these email campaigns can literally be done in like five seconds. That's something that is, is really starts to highlight where the integration really happens, because again, what's the point of having the website? The point of having the website will ultimately be to drive traffic to it and will be to collect lead information, to collect contact information that we can have to follow up with and make use of so we can sell more stuff. This is something that's that's so key to having a website, and yet so many of these website builders, since they don't do email marketing stuff, they, they just don't have as much incentive to do these things, right? And this is something that, that we're offering right here, right out of the box, in a, in a really cool way. So this was the whole first part of, of building the website, about building the online presence, but of course, once you have a website, you need to make sure that it's performing well. You need to make sure that that this content is what people actually want to see. You need to make sure that this form over here is actually performing well. So how do we do that typically? 
Generally, when we look at web analytics, we think of things like Google Analytics. And Google Analytics, who's familiar with Google Analytics? Pretty much everyone. Who thinks Google Analytics is fun and easy to use? No one. And that's not a slight on Google, that's just, that's just the nature of the product, right? Because it's, it's hardcore web analytics. It's not supposed to be something that's fun or a joy to use because it's, it's tons and tons of data, right? And that data is really valuable, but it only tells us one piece of the story. It tells us where people are coming from, it tells us where, uh, what our bounce rates are, it can give us a lot of really valuable information, but it doesn't really always provide the insight into what we need to change to do better. It doesn't really have a way of telling us that. It can just tell us when things are going well or things are going wrong, and it kind of stops there. So we have a new product that we released last month called Zoho PageSense. And PageSense is a, web optimi a website optimization platform. It's something that allows you to add a little bit of code to your website. And when I say add a little bit of code, I mean just copy and paste a snippet, not like you're doing stuff and you know you got like your your you know I don't know your coding hot pocket and your Mountain Dew and you're you're going to town or something, right? Um, it's something that just allows you to add the snippet and start to get really, really interesting and really powerful reporting. So the first thing I'm going to show you, just to give you a sense of what I'm talking about here, is a heat map. So this heat map essentially lets us know, you can see that it, it's loaded up our website, as I was showing you from a live version, and it shows you these splotchy, rainbowy, kind of hurricane-looking things. And what this is is a, is a heat map that's telling us how many people are clicking on these different buttons. And it's showing us where people essentially are engaging. And we can see it on our website, you know, really, really easily, right? So we see that up here, for example, we're getting about 33, 33 clicks on this, on this contact page. People are clicking these, these arrows, which is just to move the carousel. And over here on the right, we can see the top engaging elements that are, that are actually telling us what are people clicking the most. So the thing that people are clicking the most is this slider arrow, right? And this slider arrow, again, is, is right here. It's, it's this thing that's, that's being highlighted, right? So this is letting us know something that goes beyond what Google can tell us, which is actually where are the clicks actually happening. And, it, and of course, it can tell us where the links are being clicked, but this is going to put it for you in a nice visual way. But here's another, another uh, a report that's really cool called the scroll map. I've written a lot of web copy, and when I saw this feature, it was the single most depressing professional thing I've ever seen in my life, okay? Because what the scroll map does is it shows us how far, on aggregate, our visitors are making it down the web page, okay? So, we have folds. Folds are going to be like this, for example, is a fold, everything in red. When you log on or you, or you land on this page, the first thing you'll see is the first fold. No surprise, 100% of the visits have seen this page, right? Because they have nothing else they would see. This is exactly what they would see as soon as they land on it. Well, what happens when we scroll down the page? What happens? Well, only 78% of people are making it to this part. 55% are making it to this part, so half the people aren't even seeing all of this crazy stuff. Only 34% of the people are seeing that really beautiful testimonial section that we were so proud of. And our beautiful newsletter sign-up, only 22% of people are seeing, right? So that simple report is giving us an idea of how many people are actually able to make it down the web page. So when we say, you know, we have this web page that tells a perfect story about our product, it covers every angle, yet we keep getting all of these support requests about these features that no one seems to be aware of, even though we have it on the web page. We're like, what is going on? Are people just, like, foolish? Like, are they, are they just, like, just... Like, what, what's happening, right? Now we can see, it's like, oh, well, it's because literally no one has ever seen that information, right? So if we need that information to be covered, or we need that to be a, a, something that's important, or something that we're trying to highlight or drive engagement to, we're going to really need to move it up the page. Does that make all sense to everyone? Page sense is pretty cool, right? Yeah, pretty cool. Um, and this is really only the tip of the iceberg, but one of the other cool things, and this is really where it, where it becomes, you know, really, really strong, is um, basically having um, 
Uh, I can't find it here. But either way, it's basically having, um, yeah, so like funnel analysis, for example. So we can create funnels by saying, okay, we're going to create a funnel where we say home page to our product design page to our contact us page. And we want to see how well that's performing. We want a nice even, we want to see how that curve essentially looks where people are dropping off so we can figure out what do we need to improve to get more conversions kind of in that final, that final place. Well, looking at this right here, we see 156 people come to the home page, 25 visitors are going to the product design page, 15 people are making it to that contact us page. Where would we say the weakness is really here? The weakness is clearly the home page and product design page. So if we're trying to push more people to um, that page, we know that once they get there, they're more likely to convert, right? They're, they're probably going to, there's a 60% there's a chance they're going to convert, they're going to get to that page, which is really, really good number. So we know that if we look at this, we can, we can figure out, okay, the drop-off is here. Let's try to highlight that content in a more meaningful way to, to really try to push people to that harder. Because again, once they get there, we know they're going to want to contact us. Right? So these are some of the things that you can quickly figure out by just running PageSense. And again, I don't have time to demo this next part, but ultimately what you can also do in PageSense, which is really, really cool, is run what, we, what are called A-B tests. And the A-B test allows you to take your original page, make a small, well, I mean, you could make massive changes to it if you wanted to, but I recommend making a small change that, that you can track the, so you can track the, um, what's actually changed, so you can track the performance relative to the change you've made. And ultimately, in PageSense, through a couple clicks, create a variation of that live web page and then serve that along with the original page to your visitors and see which one performs better. You can actually set goals for what you're trying to make happen. And then at the end of the week or after so many visitors, you can say, OK, which one did better, the original page or our new variation, our experiment? And then from there, you can say, OK, the experiment is really outperforming the original page. Let's call up the web developer, and let's get this updated on the site and make that a permanent change. And the real value here is it gives your marketing team, or you if you're the marketer, a lot of power to, to change things, to experiment, even if you don't have all of the technical skills to update a website all the time. And if you have one web developer maybe on contract or that person just has a lot of projects they're always working on, you freed up that person from having to work on these little tedious changes all the time. So now you've empowered two employees essentially with one tool uh, or two departments even with one, with one simple tool. So that's really what PageSense allows us to do. And again, it's a part of this whole process of building and improving our website so we have a really strong presence um, to drive customers to. So we've talked about this so far, and now we are going to talk about this next part, which is driving um, traffic to the site. So I'm going to go to this landing page here that we have and close this. And now I'm going to go to Zoho Social. So as I said, right, building presence, now we're in this part of driving traffic. You can see what I mean when I said, like, there's a lot that we could talk about, right? I mean, we're, I'm, I'm probably taking a little too long even because I just want to be thorough. But basically, we're, we're, we're now needing to really drive this traffic. And one of the ways we can do that is through social media, right? We have Zoho Social. Really, I'm going to focus on this, this new post feature. And I'm going to basically say, I have my landing page, which is trying to drive traffic to a particular page, and I'm trying to promote this on social media, so that way we can try to drive sales for this, for this service. So I'll add the link. There's a link sh uh, shortener built in. And I'll say, um, you know, check out our great services, right? Not a great post, but it'll be good enough, right? Um, and you can see that, you know, when we post to Facebook, Facebook will automatically uh, pull this image. And for Twitter, um, you know, we're going to post there as well. So we're going to go ahead and actually turn off the Facebook thing and just do Twitter for now and post this. And um, we can see right here, um, April 12th, this is going to be the post that we've just made, right? So we'll click on this, and we can get more details on all that. 
and uh, we can actually go and look at then our, our Twitter posts there. So a pretty nice post if we're talking about our, our services. And ultimately, the service that we're trying to create awareness for, again, for this design agency, is their service where not only can they print, uh, design a logo for you, but they can even print it on a t-shirt for you and then sell you the t-shirts as well. So they can do that kind of end-to-end -end thing, and that's what they're highlighting here. So if I'm, if I'm a customer now, I'm, I'm seeing this, this post on their social media, on their Twitter, and I'm interested in this. Maybe I found them using some hashtag or something, and I click this link. The link, of course, takes me to their landing page about printing custom shirts and encourages me to fill out a form so that I can get a quote. And you see at the bottom, it's kind of hard to see, the little out-of-line logo is moving around, so it's letting me know that there's someone there that we could chat with if we need to. And ultimately, now we're going to, we're going to fill out this form and, and generate the lead, right? And one of the things you'll notice if, you're a, uh, if you've been using like CRM for a while, you'll notice, for example, that this is not a CRM form. This is actually a form that was built using Zoho Creator, which is our application development platform. And the reason we're using this is to kind of show, you know, what you can do with something like Zoho Creator. We can do some really powerful stuff. So, for example, we'll go ahead and fill this out. Um, I have to fill it out a specific way for the demo, so... <laughs> um, cooking class, see? And they have a in Gmail there. And now they're going to put in a phone number, and they're going to put in some just 555 number because they want the, the service apparently, but they're not really that interested in it some, for some reason. Um, and they say, do you already have a logo? And they say, yes, we do have a logo. And now you see this form is smart, and it's added some new options based off that response. So we can go here and choose the logo. We'll just use this for now. And we can then say, choose the shirts that we want this printed on. It gives us a few options, and it actually returns a shirt here. So you could actually see it as you're ordering it, right? So this is stuff that you can't do with a Zoho CRM form, but it's something you can do with Creator to have a really custom experience if you want to get into this stuff. Um, so we have uh, this shirt that we're going to want to print it on. We need to select a day to, uh, for this to go out, and we'll say... Uh, tomorrow, this is going to be a rush order, and we'll need, fi oh, actually, there's an error that comes up. It says, actually, it takes us a while to process these orders. Please select a date that's five days out. So there's a validation running on this form to make sure that someone isn't submitting essentially junk into the system or submitting things as a lead that we actually can't really even follow up with, right? If this person needs this order to go out tomorrow, we're not going to be able to do it. We can save ourselves and them a lot of time by just throwing up this message right here and right now. So we see that, and we can say they're going to need 50 and submit the request, Oh, but actually it looks like we have another thing that pops up here, which says that if you want to uh, fill this out, we, we've noticed that you entered a fake 555 number, please put in a real phone number, right? Now there's a, there's a, there's a concept in, in software, in data modeling and everything else, it's called garbage in, garbage out. You put garbage into a system, garbage comes out the other end. When you put bad data into a system, it makes it hard to keep track of it, makes it hard to use. So this is a check that's happening here to make sure that no bad phone numbers are getting into the system. Now, if someone really wants to, they could, they could put in a real fake phone number. But ultimately, again, this is just one more little idea or one more example of what you can do um, with... Uh, um, with, with something like a creator form. Um, oops, so I still didn't update this. See, I'm not a good user of this. Okay, and we'll go ahead and submit the request. Thanks, we'll be getting back to you. And so, so now we've generated that lead. And now, of course, there's the process of following up and closing, which, of course, happens in Zoho CRM. So I'll go ahead and launch that, go into the leads module, And there she is, right? So it says that she's come in today. Karen's cooking school, all this information. The lead source was the logo printing form. And we can go in here and we can see all of this different information, right? Um, and in fact, one of the cool things we can do 
is we can actually go to the very bottom of this record. This is just a quick way to navigate by using this bar over here. You see there's this custom um, related list called logo printing. So we'll go down here and it loads up basically what was just shown to us from that form. So we can see this is the logo that Karen submitted through that form. We can see that she was interested in having um, all of these different shirts and we can see um, when the deadline for this project is, right? So this is ultimately just information that we can use to follow up with Karen. So now we can call her up and say, hey Karen, I saw you were interested in the red shirts. We have your logo here. It looks like we can totally print this. You said you need it done by here. We're just making sure that this is really what you're interested in because if so, we can generate a quote for you right now and send that over to you. And right there, we've kind of really begun that process of closing this person, right? By generating all this information and doing some custom stuff within the suite, and now we can move forward to, to closing and also you know, taking care of all the accounting stuff. This is only the first part so far, and now Dylan is gonna come on and he's going to take you through the last bit of this, right? So far, we haven't actually made a deal. So far, we've, you know, we've built the presence, we've driven the traffic, we've generated the lead, we've, we've talked about how we could follow up, we could automate the follow up with a, uh, an email as soon as Karen gets added to the, the CRM, or we could just you know, create a task for a salesperson to then follow up right away and call. Depending on your lead volume, you're gonna want different things. And from there, you know, we can begin this process of actually, of actually closing the deal. But you'll notice that estimates, invoices, closing, all of this stuff is kind of interrelated, which is again, it's why these systems have to connect and that's what Dylan is going to talk about now. So give Dylan a nice round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Taylor. As Taylor was saying, we just left off. We finished up all of those blue tiles there but I'm gonna pick up right at this section where we're approving quotes and we're passing all of Karen's information from our sales team to our finance team. And so when I come into Zoho CRM here, if I am a user of Zoho Books or I have Zoho One and so I can integrate all my Zoho applications together, um, there's a new section which opens up when you're looking at a customer where you can actually generate estimates, you can generate invoices straight from Zoho CRM and all of the information which you generate from CRM will show up in Zoho Books. So that's, that's what I'm gonna be focusing on here. But first things first, uh, we need to actually convert this lead into a contact and we'll create a new deal for them. So I'll just enter in some information here. Um, and let's say, you know, I think it was April 26th was the date they chose, which we got from our uh, special Zoho creator form, of course. And I think that's all we need here. All right, so we just converted our lead into a customer because we got their information and maybe our salesperson called them up and got any extra details that we needed to get about what their custom logo printing order was. So the next step here is we have this deal which gets generated in our system. And what we're gonna end up doing is we're going to send an estimate uh, so Karen can then say whether she approves of our deal here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to switch over to the contacts. I'm gonna open up Karen's record here. And if I click on this Zoho Finance section over on the left here, uh, you can see we have this nice thing which lists any estimates, sales orders, invoices, or packages that we have which are associated with a particular customer. And so I'm gonna actually generate an estimate for Karen. And so uh, right away this opens up the screen and if you're familiar with Zoho Books, this looks exactly like how it looks in Zoho Books when you're generating an estimate or generating an invoice, right? And so we know that they're interested in our logo design service, and uh, we also know how many t-shirts they were looking for, so I'll add some t-shirts onto their order, and let's say, I think it was 50 that he input earlier. And so if I zoom in on this, uh, I know this is pretty hard to see actually, but right under where uh, I've listed the number of t-shirts in their order, it actually says how many t-shirts are available. So it's actually pulling information from Zoho Inventory where we can keep track of how much stock we have. And we can make sure that we actually have all of the items that we need to actually fulfill this order before sending the estimate. Because otherwise, if we came in here and we know that 
uh, Karen wants 50 t-shirts and we only have five in stock right now, then we'd have to go shoot her an email and say, I'm sorry, we're gonna have to order more shirts, we might not be able to do this order in time, right? So we get a good idea right up front of whether we'll be able to do this order in time. And then, of course, I can come in here and I can put in a discount if I want. Uh, so I'll just put in a $10 discount, but I could also make it a percentage discount just by changing this right here. Um, and then uh, one other nice thing here is that we have this default terms and conditions, which will get added to our estimate, and that'll go out to the customer. So it's more like a legal contract because we can actually add in um, you know, whatever our legal team sends us. But we could also change the terms and conditions on a case-by-case -case basis. So this is just loading up the default one here, but if I wanted some special terms and conditions for this particular customer, I could go in and edit them. All right, so I'm going to send this out. So I'll hit save and send here. And then it shows me what, e what the email is that'll go out to Karen. And this is just, again, this is an email template. We could change this template if we wanted. We can also write some kind of personal message on it too. So we can quickly modify our template messages if we wanna have some kind of uh, you know, pers more personal interaction with this particular customer. For now, I think this is fine, so I'll just send out this estimate. Okay, and so now we can see the estimate uh, exactly as our customers will see it. It's been marked as sent with this little blue band in the upper left corner there. But now let's follow up with the next phase where we actually wanna see what the customer is gonna see when I send this out to them. And then I wanna show you guys what happens when we're actually going to go through the approval process of the estimate and what it's like when the customer uh, pays us and how we can get paid online. Um, so if I switch over to uh, this Gmail here, this is Karen's inbox. She gets an email which tells her that the estimate is awaiting her approval. And so just by default, it's gonna send her a PDF of this estimate. But there's actually a better way that we could do this. Instead of just having her print out this PDF, you know, signing it to show that she approves it, emailing it back to us, there's actually a much smoother way which we can handle this whole operation here. So now I'm gonna switch from Zoho CRM over to Zoho Books. And when I go to Zoho Books, I can search for Karen's record. And so we can see Karen has been added to Zoho Books as well. Remember, she came in through that creator form earlier, was added into CRM, and then from there, she was pushed over to Zoho Books. So all our customer information is getting spread from application to application, any place that we would need to have it. And so when I come in here, there's actually this option where you can configure a client portal for your customers. Let's take a look at this. So I'll click on that, and then I will set a password for her. And this will just be a first time temporary password. And I'll hit save. So now when I switch back over to Karen's email, she gets an email that lets her know that she's been invited to our customer portal. So when she hits accept, uh, there's a password which is sent. That password which I just generated for her is in the email. Um, and so she'll fill this out. Karen's cooking class at gmail.com. And then she'll enter in her temporary password. And right away it'll prompt her to uh, generate a new password. So that way no one knows how to get into her account. Makes her feel a little bit more secure. And so this is what your customers will see when they come into this client portal. And so when you generate the client portal, the first thing that they'll see is any outstanding invoices they have with you. So if they owe you money, they're gonna see that very big upfront right here. Uh, if they have any store credit with you, that'll also show up pretty prominently. And then uh, what's nice here is they have some contact details for your company, but they can also update their own contact details over here. So if I was Karen, I could go in here and I could edit uh, you know, the information about me, I could update my billing address, so if I move to 555 Imaginary Lane, you know, I can update this from my end, instead of having to call you guys or tell you guys that I've changed addresses. And then, if I switch back over to Zoho Books here and I refresh, uh, it'll take a second to reload this, I can zoom in here and you'll see that the information which Karen just updated in her client portal is immediately updated in Zoho Books. All right, 
So I sent Karen this estimate earlier, and now let's take a look at what she sees when she goes onto this estimates section, which is over on the left here. So any estimates that she has will show up in this list here. She can see the date it was sent and the total that it's for, but she can open up the estimate. Um, and so when she opens up the estimate, she sees that same view which our sales representative saw. So both sides are seeing the same exact thing. Each document shows up the same in both places. And then, uh, you know, she can review the terms and conditions, see the breakdown of the services that we're offering and how much she's being charged for the shirts here. But then when she's ready to approve this, she can just click this red accept button right here. And so when she hits accept, it'll update over here in uh, Zoho Books, and so it shows accepted in her end. But if we go back over to Zoho Books, we see there's like this red notification badge up in the top here, and it says, Karen's Cooking School has accepted your estimate. And of course, if I wanna then go open up that estimate, I could just click on this notification, and it takes me right to that page right there, where I can see exactly what she saw. But then what's really cool about this is, you know, if, imagine the process which you go through without this software. Once somebody has approved an estimate and you've delivered the goods and services or uh, it's time to bill them, it's time to send them an invoice, you have to go through that whole process manually and you have to remember to do that on time. But you can set this up to all be automated with Zoho Books. So if I click on the invoices section in Karen's portal, we now have immediately generated an invoice. So she's accepted our estimate, and now it's time to pay us. And that invoice, we didn't have to do any work to create it. We didn't have to have any emailing back and forth. It's just automatically there in the payment portal. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so when she goes into the invoices section, uh, she can see when the invoice is due, and she can open up the invoice, of course. But, uh, you know, let's say that maybe Karen has some problem with whatever is on her order and she sees that something has been done wrong. So, uh, again, we can save another email interaction because she can come in here and she can just write a comment directly on this invoice and say, I thought I was getting a better discount, right? And so she can add a comment on her invoice. And if I switch back over to Zoho Books, I'll get another notification right here, and I'll say, Karen's Cooking School has commented on the invoice. And if I clicked on that, it would open up the invoice uh, and take me to the top here, and I can see her comment. There's actually this little piece at the top here where I can see a whole history of transactions of what's happened with this invoice. When it was created, when it was viewed, I can see exactly when she looked at it for the first time, and then uh, I can also see her comment. So you know, if someone has viewed their invoice but then not paid you and their bill is now late and you call them up, you have that knowledge at your fingertips. You can say, hey, I know you looked at this like a week ago. What's, what's the problem here? And then, of course, uh, I could go and reply to her or I could write a comment to my team. Um, so it all depends on whether I check this box to display the comment in the portal, so displaying the comment to Karen, or if I want to write a private comment just to other people on the team and say what happened. But uh, for the sake of this demo, I will put one in the portal and I'll just say, you know, something really nice to Karen. Uh, so it's a great way to really improve your relationships with customers there. Uh, and if we switch back over to the portal and I refresh, Karen can come in and she can see my message. And, uh, you know, she'll be really sad to see that, but it's okay. Uh, but, you know, maybe Karen just decides that she's, she's given up and she doesn't care about our bad service and she's not going to complain. She's actually just going to pay the invoice and, uh, and deal with the bad discount which she was given. And so when she goes to pay the invoice, there's this big red Pay Now button. So if I click Pay Now, um, I've integrated Zoho Books with some payment gateways. So payment gateways are just services that let you process payments. So for instance, PayPal or WePay, which let you, uh, you know, charge credit cards. And so we've connected this account with WePay, so she'll click pay via card if she wants to pay through her credit card. And then you see the classic credit card screen. So she would fill out her credit card information right here. And then she could also uh, authorize the charge to be automatically, authorize her card to be automatically recharged if she wanted to. 
Um, but let's say that, you know, Karen's a little bit old school and she's actually not going to pay via credit card. So how would we record a transaction in the system if she paid us through cash or if she paid us through check? Um, and what we could actually do is once we receive that cash or check in the mail or in person or whatever, I could come in here in Zoho Books and I could hit record payment and I could say her payment mode, whether it was cash, check or whatever, um, and then just click record payment right here. And as soon as I record the payment, it gets marked as paid with this little green band right here. And of course, when Karen comes back in her portal, um, her invoice is marked as paid and she'll have a new section on the payments made which shows how much she paid, but she'll also have this complete statement of accounts with our business where she could then see every transaction that she's had with us. So it's a very professional way to interact with your customers over the billing process. Um, and of course, she could also drill down, like if she wants to see a statement of accounts for just a particular month or a particular quarter, she could do that if she wanted to as well. Uh, so I've gone through, if we go back over here, I've gone through sending out in a quote, uh, approving a quote, sending an invoice, uh, matching, recording a transaction. Um, and another thing which I didn't even show you guys is that you can set up a slightly more automated way to match payments to invoices. Because to make sure, after you've closed a deal in CRM, to make sure that you've actually been paid for that deal, you always want to match a real bank account transaction with the person's invoice. And that's what accounting software can really help you with. There's actually a banking section in Zoho Books where you can go in and add a bank account or add a credit card. And we have integrations with thousands of different banks, I believe. And um, what will happen is it'll just import any transactions from your bank account. And then you can match those to invoices manually in the system. Um, okay, so we've looked at quite a bit of this. Uh, one other thing that I want to show you guys real quickly is what if we want to actually bill somebody for some time? Because right now, you know, we just, we just uh, artificially decided that this t-shirt job was going to be $5,000. But what if we actually wanted to bill based off of hours worked? So there's a timesheet which is built into Zoho Books. Where I can go in and uh, I could hit create a new project, and so I'll just call this Karen's Cooking uh, Design, and then I'll choose which customer, so if I search for Karen, she shows up right there, and then I can choose a billing method right here. And so there's a bunch of different ways which you can handle billing people. So besides just billing for like those t-shirts where it was something pulled in from my inventory and I was multiplying the number of t-shirts by the cost of the t-shirt, I could also bill someone for uh, you know, the hours we spent on a project. So if we just want to charge $80 an hour for the entire project, no matter what kind of work we were doing, we could do that. Or we could do a uh, different hourly breakdown for each member of the staff which worked on that pro who worked on that project. Um, or we could even break it down by task. So we could actually charge differently for the people who were photoshopping her design and the people who were actually printing out the design and the people who were actually shipping it if we wanted to get that granular. Um, so I'll just show, I don't know, how about project hours? And I'll choose $60 an hour. And then I will hit save. Oh wait, I forgot to add a task there. Oh well, that's okay. Uh, so then uh, what I'll do is I can log time to this particular project. So I just hit this big red log time button and then I can choose which task I was working on. So we didn't enter in any tasks. I'll just add one right here. Let's say Photoshopping, because they're a design company. And uh, we have this, oops, I hit enter there too soon. So we have this Photoshopping task. And uh, let's say we spent four hours and 30 minutes on it, and it's billable. I could also mark that as unbillable just to show, hey, look at all this extra work I had to do for you guys, and I'm not even charging you, right? So I could add that onto their bill too. And then I could hit save. Another option here is instead of just entering in the hours after they're done, is you could start a timer when you begin working and then just hit stop when you're done working, and that'll add that into the system too. And what's really nice about the Zoho Books timesheet is that you can add anyone in your business onto this. So uh, 
anyone can come in and if you mark them as a timesheet only user, they won't see all of your financial information, they won't realize that you're running out of money and you won't be able to actually pay them next month, but they will be able to log time, which is what you really want, right? Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, that's how you bill people for hours, and what we would do then is, once we have our hours entered in from all the different people working on the project, I would just create an invoice from this project. And so I'll just show you very quickly what this looks like. Um, so it adds in the hours right here, but I could also, of course, add in something else if I wanted to, too. So, you know, for billing someone for all these different project hours, we could also add on whatever the item is that we were uh, making for them. So if we wanted to add on you know, 15 white t-shirts that we were custom designing for them and add those to the bill, of course we could do that. Um, but one thing that's really cool is you can also choose which payment options are gonna be available for each customer. So I've added in PayPal, I've added in WePay, so these are the ones that show up here. There's other options, but if I said, you know, I really want this person to pay me through PayPal because I'm getting a better rate through them or something, I could just uncheck WePay, and then that would be the only option they see when they go to pay us in the client portal. Uh, so once I save and send this out, it'll of course uh, generate this invoice, and this is the email template which I created earlier, and it'll get populated over here, so we can see that Karen has a new invoice where it breaks down this project. Um, and it shows you know, how many hours we spent and the rate per hour for each of the tasks. So uh, that is, in a nutshell, how all of the billing works in Zoho Books. Uh, so I probably won't go into Zoho Inventory, but just so you know, the count of all of the t-shirts the uh, that we were pulling from is stored in an application called Zoho Inventory, which lets you manage where all of your items are, it lets you manage all of your uh, shipments and your orders. And so it integrates with shipping carriers, and what you could do then is uh, generate your shipping labels right out of Zoho Inventory, and print them out and send your package. So I think Taylor wanted to come back and tell you guys a few more things. Uh, so I'll just leave it to Taylor. Okay, big round of applause for Dylan then. Thank you. So yeah, I mean, to just bring this back around, right? I mean, we just saw an incredible amount of stuff. I mean, we went all the way from, from the idea of creating a domain all the way to, you know, actually creating a customer, invoicing them, giving them power to really do that effectively, and giving them a really professional, uh, really smooth experience to do all of that stuff, right? I mean, that's what we saw, right? It was pretty cool, right? I mean, we, would you say that we proved what we said we would prove in this session? Yeah? So, so this is the value of Zoho One. It, we're putting together all of these applications, but... We don't want to think about them necessarily as applications anymore from a Zoho One perspective. We want to think of them as just ingredients, right? We can use that kind of like a food analogy. We can give you all of these different recipes, all these different use cases, and we can put all of these different ingredients together using complete apps or just features or integrations to help you create the best kind of system for your business. So maybe you're not using inventory, maybe you're not using social, maybe you're, you're not using sites, whatever. The point is, is that you have this big bag of tricks that you can use and you can pull from to do all sorts of different stuff. And this is what we mean by, by this idea that you have these, all these ingredients to cook up these solutions. And really, um, this is really where I'm going to, you know, and these are the, some of these different apps that, that correspond to these different uh, processes. But there's more then, right? I mean, I showed, we showed you end to end from, from kind of sales, marketing, support, all the way to accounting, invoicing, shipping, uh, doing inventory. There's more stuff that you could do. For like signing a contract, for example. Signing a contract is an important part of, of maybe a smaller process or a smaller workflow, but fits in with things that you're going to be needing all the time. Well, generally speaking, there's three or four or five different kind of services that fit into that workflow, right? And I'm not going to demo this, but I'm just going to show you. Like, this is another example of, of, of a recipe, right? Where you're receiving a contract through your email. You don't want to download the attachment, so you add it to the online document management system, like Zoho Docs or, or G Suite or something like that. You need to collaborate around the content, maybe through chat, or you need to 
um, you know, set up a kind of online meeting so you can really um, review something with a remote employee or something. You then need to sign the document, which you do with an online signature um, application with, like we have with Zoho Sign and send that to the person who needs it. But maybe this whole process corresponds to a larger project you're working on and you then need that signed document to be associated to the project that you're doing in Zoho Projects. You can do that. I could demo it for you if I had the time, but I don't. And there's even more, right? So look at like HR, for example, hiring a new employee. I'm, I'm trying to really drive this home for you to really show you all the stuff that's possible. So you have a job opening in your organization. You have a job opening, so you're gonna need to try to fill that. So you post the opening to your website through that recruit portal that I showed you where you can you know, list all the different uh, sites, uh, positions that are available. Or maybe you also wanna post it to a job board like indeed.com or Monster or something like that. And after those applicants come into that posting and submit their resume, you have all these resumes that you're pulling into your system, but then you need to parse the resume because you don't want to manually input all of that data. You want to put that into a nice record so you could really easily move through it and figure out who you want to follow up with. And at that point, you're going to schedule that interview. You need to get a hiring manager, maybe an HR manager, and the applicant in the same room. That's not an easy thing to do. It's something you can do using Zoho One Apps. And then you're gonna send them that offer letter, something you need to prepare the document for a signature, and you can do that with sign and send that out. And you're gonna to need to move that employee into your HR system so you can begin the HR onboarding where you need to get their different personal information and set up their tax documents so that, again, you can com you know, comply with the laws and stay out of prison and uh, keep them out of prison too, that'd be nice. You maybe need to assign them at some different devices. Maybe you give people iPhones and MacBooks like we get here. Um, and then if you're using Zoho One, you need to add this person to Zoho One so that way you can um, start provisioning the software they'll need so when they come in on the first day, they have the device sitting at the desk that they're assigned to, they have all of the stuff that they're going to need to be successful, including maybe, for example, maybe they're a salesperson and there's, there's three different services that all your salespeople need access to, CRM, email, and chat. Well, you can add them to the sales group and automatically they get all of that stuff so you don't even have to go in and do that one by one. And finally, you know, you can give them that email address so right on that first day they can begin training and they have everything like every employee should. So this again, we could demo this for you. We just don't have the time, unfortunately, right? And that really fits in with, with all of this other stuff that we're showing. So that's, that's really the value of Zoho One. It's an incredible amount of, of applications. It's an incredible amount of ingredients that allow you to combine and arrange things that fit your business to do stuff that makes it easy on you. It really allows you to take your business to the next level. And that way you can continue to focus on your customers, create lots of value for them, and create lots of good experiences, and then do really, really, really well, okay? So that's all the time we have. Thank you very much.